guys, we have Duke, we have Carolina, we have the monster blue bloods in the final four. We're going to talk about all of that coming up here in New Orleans. Uh, I want to start with the Duke Carolina game because obviously Duke is the juggernaut. Uh, we have North Carolina here, the Cinderella with their Jordan slipper. I'm stealing that from T.O. That was a great line. Uh, what, what, what are you looking forward to the most out of this matchup, T.O.? You're the ACC guy on here. I know you try to claim to be a Big East guy, but you are an yeah, ACC exactly. guy at heart. Yeah. We got Duke. <laughs> we got Carolina. We got the Final Four. I know you love New Orleans, too. Like, this this is pretty much the perfect storm for T.O. I love New Orleans for the fishing, but you got to drive an hour and a half away to go fishing. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited about Duke. It, but be honest, guys, you know what the crazy part about this whole thing is? I think Duke has less pressure for this game than they did their last regular season game. As nuts mm-hmm. as it is. As nuts, it's a final four game that will have less pressure than Coach K's last game at Cameron Indoor. And I think well, they've kind of shake have they shook that off. This team, this Duke's team is ready to play, and Carolina's not playing, they're playing better than anybody in the country. It's going to be a fantastic game. I hope it goes into like four overtimes because I think it's entirely possible that it does. But do as good as North Carolina play is playing, Duke's right there. How many offensive weapons did they have against Arkansas? It was an embarrassment of riches watching that game. And Arkansas played well. Jalen Williams, I was watching with my brother who's in who's in the country from Norway for a few weeks. He goes, I don't know who that dude is, but he does his freaking job every single time down the court. I love <laughs> that guy. And he hadn't watched a game of college basketball all year, just to throw that out there. But uh, Arkansas was fine. They had a great run at it. But, Duke, just so many weapons. I just don't know how in the world. You're going to have to get prime Caleb Love who goes for 40 or a, as long as he wears a Carolina blue 11s, he's good to go, man. He's good to go. Is that the thing? He changed his him? shoes at halftime of the sweet. Six- yeah. He changed his shoes at halftime of the sweet 16 game from, he had black shoes on and changed them to the, uh, the Carolina blue Jordan 11s. I think they're called the Pantone 11s and the big he had 27 in the second half. Then he went out and they blew out St. Peter's nobody bl- who blows out St. Peter's only Caleb love with the blue Jordans on Goodman. That's it. Yeah, I, listen, here, here's the thing. I was there at that Duke Carolina game, and I, I just I just don't see it going that way again. You know, yeah, like with you. Baycott dominated Mark Williams. Like, mm-hmm. like R.J. Davis was so dominant in that game, and the pressure, like you guys said, was so much for those guys. They looked like they had just been absolutely, like, beaten down at the end of it. I remember looking at, Paulo's face as Kay took the microphone and family kind of interrupted him when he was kind of apologizing for, for, for the loss. And he, you could just see it in his eyes, how embarrassed those guys were. And I think they've been waiting, hoping they could get another shot at, mm-hmm. at Carolina. And now they get it and they're licking their chops now. Like nobody's more excited for Duke like than Duke to see North Carolina right now. Nobody's more excited. They, they I mean, it was like they, they took a dump on them. Like that's <laughs> how bad it was. It was so bad. I mean, seriously, it couldn't have been more embarrassing than what happened that day. And now they get another shot to show like, no, 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 this, this is both. We're going to come out and we're going to kick their ass. And I think Duke's going to kick their ass in this. Did, did you see what Paolo said in the, the ACC tournament? No. Paolo he basically said, I said want Carolina. Yeah. And then, and then after they won the, uh, after they won the, the lead eight game and they advanced to the final four, someone asked him like, so who do you want to win? Do you want us to play St. Peter's in North Carolina? And Paolo was like, you're not going to get me this time. And basically didn't answer <laughs> the question. <But> they, want, <laughs> they, they want, they definitely want Carolina. I think we all want oh. this matchup. We all wanted this matchup. They got a point to prove, man. They got something to say. And I like, look, I know we're talking about like this, uh, this, this North Carolina team is the Cinderella. And I'm out, I'm about to call Duke as the team of destiny in this tournament. The the Duke Blue Devils and Coach K is the team of destiny, but they kind of are like this is setting up perfectly for them to be able to make a run and win a national title to you. I think, uh, is that, is that how this thing ends? It seems like it. I'm sitting here looking at that bracket and as good as, as good as Carolina's been, like I said, Duke was just – it's embarrassing how good they've played. It's yeah, embarrassing yeah, how good they've played. Yeah. And then who matches up with them on the other side? Kansas, definitely more talent than Kansas. And then without Justin Moore, Villanova, I'm not sure that can Villanova with only five players well, over well, the course yeah, we'll of 40 get, minutes. We'll, we'll get to that Sorry. because I have, I, have, I have a take there. I have a take that I'm going to bounce off uh, you guys. This, this is what we call uh, a tease in the business. It's a little bit of a hot take. but uh, I was going to say it's guys. probably – is it a hot take or a lukewarm take? Like what kind of – 
it's a little bit more than lukewarm. It's not quite a hot take. It's like if you you know how when you microwave soup sometimes and you you it, like if you don't mix it up, the top will be scalding and the middle will be really cold. Like that's what this take is. Where's where, where's Fanta when you need him need him for a good food <laughs> reference? That's the only thing. Where's Fanta when you need him for a good food reference? Uh, no, I I don't see who beats Duke. You can't convince me otherwise. I know you, I know you got Kansas. Uh, Goodman, but goodness me, I do. watching watching Duke play Arkansas and Arkansas is really good defensively. And prior to that, Texas Tech is really good defensively. Yeah. Texas Tech, they yeah. did. They couldn't stop them one time in the last nine minutes of a game. The number that, one defense that is in incredible. The country, that the is number incredible. one defense in the country played Duke. Duke didn't miss a shot for nine minutes. That is incredible. And you don't have to be that good. To, be, to win these next two games, but you have to be really, you have to be on your A game, but you don't have to be nine minutes without missing a shot. Good. Yeah. And, and what they did down the stretch against Michigan state too, like it feels like they kind of came of age a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. No. Well, Jeremy, so let me, Roach. Uh, Jeremy Roach. Yeah. Right. Let me, let me, right. let me ask you guys right. this. Um, we have about four minutes before we, have, before we have to get to, uh, to another break. What does North Carolina have to do to win this game? How do they win this game? Goodman, you go first. I mean, listen, R.J. Davis has to completely control it, number one, right? I mean, he's got to be terrific. Caleb Love can't play like he did today. Like, he's got to be right. great Caleb Love. Like, their backcourt's got to own it. And then Baycott makes – I mean, does what he does down low. And, and honestly, all he's got to do is is fight to a, a draw with Mark Williams. Brady Manick makes some shots. I mean, they got to – listen, here's what, what has to happen. They've got to play their A game like they did at Cameron, and Duke has to play at C game. Like it maybe didn't even at Cameron. They might have played its D game at Cameron. So, like, if they both play their A game, we know Duke is 10, 12, 15 points better. But it doesn't always work out that way. I I just think, again, there's enough kind of venom for for Duke that they they didn't know if they get another shot at him. And when they saw the bracket, you know they were looking forward to, like, man – I would love to get another shot of these dudes in the final four. And, and now they have it and they have it in New Orleans and it'll be interesting. Like, like the atmosphere, I know we, we probably won't talk a lot about atmosphere here, but like, I don't know how good, like, I think it'll be good, but like Villanova doesn't travel that well. We know that, but like Kansas, Kansas will tr- probably travel the best of the group. Carolina travels well, Duke travels pretty well, but, but you don't have the animosity. Like, that's the one thing you don't have. When you have Louisville, Kentucky, I've always said this. It's a better rivalry than Duke Carolina. Because, like, Duke Carolina, they're too nice down south. Like, those, those fan bases are, like, you know, you know what nice. it is. You know what it is? Louisville and Kentucky fans legitimately hate each other. Where I think that right. the, the yes. Duke and, and North Carolina fans are, one, I, I feel like, Duke, there, there's more like of a national kind of Duke fandom, right? Where a lot of the people that are really right. passionate Duke fans are either like Duke alums, where you're probably not fighting all that often, or people that love Duke from the other side of the country, where like, do you really hate North Carolina that much if you're if you love Duke from San Francisco or something like that? You know what I mean? Well, um, they're, they're Clemson football fans and then they're Duke basketball fans. That's what I'm starting to gather. Yeah, yeah. And they love the Cowboys and they love the Cowboys fans. And yeah, come on. That that's what yeah. we're getting at. So that's, that's I think that's then, probably, then you, that's then, probably you have, why. then you have one fan. No, there's only one fan. There's only one fan that, that is at the same level at Louisville, Kentucky, I think, from, from Duke Carolina, and that is Psycho T. And that's who we need to get down in, in New Orleans. We got to get Tyler Hansbrough on the He side. was in Philly. He'll be there. He was in Philly. I, okay. I, I, I'll I get promise him. you he'll I'll get be him. there. And the best part of, of him, he can didn't we get him with Gerald anything. Henderson? I don't think so. I, I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen. I don't know. No. I, I don't. I don't see that one happening. <laughs> are, I, are, are, right. are, are we still talking about what Carolina has to do? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. What does Carolina have to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make Give sure your, that we're, I don't yes. want to like veer off. We can talk about psycho team. Uh, you, you, go ahead. <laughs> uh, what, what, how do they win? How does they got to they got to be efficient offensively? Like you can't have a six for twenty, Caleb Love. I like know, you need probably a, a, a yeah. better than fifty percent, Caleb Love. You need Brady Manick to hit shots from everywhere. And then Armando Baycott to clean up everything inside. Because outside of him, like he had, what, 20 rebounds today? 22 rebounds? Like, he's that guy for them. And he cannot get in foul trouble. And I don't know how in the world he plays as physical as he does. And I'm going to throw a little shade here. How in the world he plays as physical as he does 
and never seems to be in foul trouble. If he stays out of foul trouble, which is obviously going to be a given. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't he in foul trouble at Duke? Yeah, but yeah, come on. At Duke, yeah, he was. Uh, he was. Sorry, who, who, forget who that. Won, but, but he, who, he who won, who won that game? It. Who won that game, T.O.? Yeah, Carolina won that won game. That game. <laughs> no, but they got to be efficient. They got to be as efficient as they were. Uh, I mean, Caleb Love, I think, is the biggest key. But Brady Manick has to hit shots. Like, they're going to have to be really good offensively because defensively, I'm just not sure what you do against Duke playing the way they are right now.